In this lesson, we're going to be generating a CAPTCHA, so an image-based CAPTCHA. So this is random characters that are coming from the characters that I've got within the character array here. And these are just going to be randomly generated. And in order to submit the form or the field, the input here within the input area has to match the text within the CAPTCHA. And you can control the content the characters that are going to be used within the CAPTCHA. And then once it is confirmed that the input field has entered in the correct character sequence, you can submit the content. And if the character sequence is wrong, then you're going to get this red box around it. The length of the characters can be updated within the options. So you can set to whatever length and dynamically update the length of the characters. The characters themselves are randomly se selected and they're going to be held within the options caption array within the options object. So let's get started. Create an HTML file. I'm going to just use index.html linking to a JavaScript file, which I'm calling app7.js. I've got the editor opened on the left hand side, the browser window opened on the right hand side. So let's open the JavaScript code. I do have one element on the page and this is just has a class of output. So this is the element that we're going to be selecting and creating the interaction with. And this is all going to be done with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and open up the JavaScript file. I'm going to access that element using the document query selector, making a selection of the element with a class of output. So the prefixing output with a dot. Uh, so that way we can make sure that we have accessed the element properly and we're ready to interact with it with JavaScript code. So we're not going to see anything yet within the browser window. Uh, I am using Chrome, so opening up the dev tools with the inspect and going over to the console tab, we should see the output of the element within the console tab. So that looks like it's working properly. So we're ready to move on to the next step where we can create the CAPTCHA form and prepare to use that. So we're going to be using this all JavaScript. And of course, you could do it with HTML as well. Uh, so and then select the elements. Although because we did want to focus on JavaScript, we are going to be creating them with JavaScript. So we are going to need a few elements on the page. And the one that we need to create is going to be the input area. And so this is going to be where the user needs to input and validate the CAPTCHA area. So we'll just call it my input and then using the document create element. So creating an element and the element is going to be an input field. And the other element that we want to create is going to be a button. So we'll create that as well using the same method create. And this is going to be creating a button. So using it this way, it's going to automatically associate the my input to the input object and the button to the BTN variable name. So now what we want to do is we want to add them to the page. We're going to add them to the output element. So output and then using the append method, we're going to append both of those elements to the page. And the syntax is going to be the same where we're adding both of them to the page. So now we've got both elements on the page. We want to add some text to the button. So select the text content and assign a value. And I'm going to use the single quotes for the string value. And so this is going to be the output on the button itself. And I'll just write submit for the button. And also for the input, set an attribute. The attribute that we're going to set is the placeholder. And within the placeholder, you can just write CAPTCHA. So the user knows that this is where we're entering in the CAPTCHA information. The other element that we want to create is we want to create a canvas. And this is where the actual CAPTCHA is going to be drawn. So let's create canvas object and using the document create element, create a canvas element. And we also need to add that onto the page just as we did with the other elements. So we're going to just add that into output. And how about we prepend it and prepend canvas above it. So canvas by default is going to have a size to it. So because we're only going to be adding in characters to it, 
we want to make that size slightly smaller. So just where we're adjusting the properties of the elements, we're going to select canvas and let's set a width for canvas. And we should set a width of about 100 and canvas height. We can set the height to 60 picks. So that and adds in the canvas element there. And now that we've created the canvas, we can also, to draw on the canvas, we're going to use the CTX variable and select canvas and add in the get context. So get context will allow us to draw on the canvas. I'm also going to apply some properties, some more properties to the input and apply some style properties to it and set the display property and actually let's set it to be block. So that way the canvas element will just be above the input and the input is going to have its own line. Let's create an array that we can use that's going to hold all of the different characters that we're going to use. So this is going to be an array of characters and the characters. So we're going to create it as a string and then we can separate it out as an array and select items from that string. And these are the characters that you want to use within the caption. And you can have multiple different types of characters. And I'll just leave it fairly short like that. Uh, but you can add in additional characters as needed. Let's set up the options for it. And we'll set the options as an object and set the amount of characters that we want to show so that this way it can be adjusted as needed. And actually what we can do is we can move that into the options as an item within the object. And then also within the options, this is going to be our main caption array. So that's where we can add content into. Just comma separate that so it's a proper object. So we're going to also add an event to the page. So on the window object, add event listener. The event that we're going to listen for is DOM content loaded. So when the DOM content has loaded, then we're going to run the INIT function. So save the INIT. And so this is where we're going to construct the caption. Let's go ahead and we'll create the caption array that we're going to be outputting onto the page from the character set that we just created. So within the INIT, we're just going to have a simple for loop setting the value of i to equal zero and iterating while i is less than and this is where we're going to use the options length so the value from the options length and then increment i by one and we want to select random characters from the character array here so from the options character array that we have so let's uh, select a random index value using JavaScript math and then math floor math random and multiply that by the length of the options array and then add one to it. And what we'll do is we'll console log out the index values. So these are the potential characters that we're selecting. And notice that we did end up with a duplicate. So we want to make sure that we are not picking up any duplicates in there. I'm also going to just adjust the view so we have the word wraps because we're running out of space within the editor for the code. So what we want to do is we want to check just to make sure that within the options caption array that that item does not exist yet. And we'll check the index of and that's going to be coming from the caption option using the IND value and we can output that character there and you can also set up a variable call it character so that will just simplify the syntax for the code so we're checking to see if it doesn't exist in the array so if it's not equal to negative one that means that it's not within the array and that means that we can add it in. So options, cap, and push it into the options cap array. And set that character, add that character in there. 
And this should actually be using the ARR for the character. And we'll log out the character into the console. So that gives us the characters, and those are coming from the array. And we again, we did end up with a duplicate for the at symbol. So what we want to do is we want to push through. So if we look at what we currently have within the options, if we look at what we currently have within the options, we have an array of the characters that we want to output. And if we do end up with a duplicate, so if it already exists within the array, we can simply just subtract one from i. And so that will allow it to loop one more time. So that way we always end up with at least five characters within the array. And we can console log out the result of the options caption that we've just generated. And so we're always gonna have at least five characters so now we're ready to output them onto Canvas, and we'll run a function that's called add to Canvas. As we've got the content globally under the options object, we don't have to pass any arguments into the add to Canvas function. So selecting the CTX, and we can set the stroke text, and I'll just set up a value so that we can create the string from the options cap array and just joining that together. And let's add in the value that we want to output into the canvas and then where we want to position it. So starting at zero and 10. We'll see how that looks. And this actually has to use the join method for the array. So that gave us the characters there. Let's update the font size, so the CTX font. As it's slightly small there, a little bit hard to read. So let's try 20 picks, and we'll use the Georgia font style. So that made it larger, but we're still off of the screen there, so we do need to move that down. And we looks like we did throw an undefined there, so we need to uh, sort out why we're throwing the undefined. So we got to take a closer look at that content and do some debugging. Uh, so right now, we want to move this down as we've made the font size larger. So let's try 20. So that's giving us uh, the characters, but occasionally we're still running into the undefined. So we need to do some double debugging. And we can also make the size of the height of the canvas smaller. And then you can adjust this as needed depending on the size of the font that you're using within the CAPTCHA image. So that's generating the CAPTCHA image and next, we need to also make sure that when it gets added here and the submit, that we can do a check to see if they match and they validate. But first, let's do some debugging. I'll do some debugging and see until we have this undefined value there. And looking at what we've got for undefined, so it looks like the first time that it ran that we're returning back the undefined. So it's not actually picking up one of the characters properly. So let's take a look at and see what the issue here is that we're not returning back a character from the array properly. So let's actually separate that out into a separate function where we're getting a character and returning back a random character from the string. And we're also gonna make sure that that character doesn't exist already. Uh, so this is random character, and then it's returning back the random character and we can pull that information out. So make a request for the character to the random character function, which is gonna return back the character. And then within the code here, this is where we can add that character. Once we've picked it up, we can add that into the array. And we'll just output the character into the console. So what we wanna do, instead of subtracting one, if it's not in the array, we're going to return the character. Otherwise, we're going to return the random character. So essentially, it will continue to run the loop until we actually get five characters. So let's update this. Instead of looking for the character, we're going to check to see if it includes 
that value, that character value. And we also have to negate that because it's going to return a Boolean value. So we want to only return the character if this is going to not, if this is not true. So if it doesn't include it, then we return the character. And if it is included, then we run the run character again. Can you tell what the error is within this statement? So let's remove out that plus one and see if that fixes the issue. So now when I'm refreshing it, it looks like it's working properly as the index value that we were selecting from the array needs to start with zero. So we're using math floor to bring it down to the lowest value and then the random character position for the index value. So we can remove out the console content. And now that we're generating the image properly, the next step is to add the event listener to the button. So for the button, add an event listener. And the event that we're listening for is going to be a click. And we'll run a function called check valid when the button is clicked. And let's create that function. So what this but this function is going to do is it's going to check to see if the users entered in the same character set that's available within the caption. And then if it is, then we could submit the content if we're doing an Ajax request, or we can set this up as a form and do a form submit. So we'll do a check to see if the value of my input value is going to be equal to the value that we've got for the capture code. And in order to create that capture code, as it's going to be in an array, I'll call it cap code. As this is going to be an array, we're going to take the options capture and join that together back into a string format using the join method and join that back together. And this way we can check to see if the value for the input is equal to the capture code. And we'll just output that into the console as well. So if it is, then we're valid and we could submit content. If it's not, then we can say wrong code. And also let's uh, clear the input area and set the value just to be clear. So we get wrong code. Let's try entering in the right code. So that's with the dollar D960 and do a submit, submit content. So it is, was able to validate that image. Uh, let's also, when it's the wrong code, we'll select the my input and style border color and we'll set the border color to be red. So that way the user can see that there's actually something wrong with that. Uh, let's add in an event listener. So my input add event listener. And this is going to be the focus event. And we'll update the border back to be white. So now when the user starts typing again on it and they're entering a new captcha, that content is going to go back to, uh, to normal. So it's not going to be with the red border. So submit content, and then we can, this is where we can add in the submission of the content. And of course you can apply styling as needed. So setting up uh, max length, and we'll just get the max length to match what we've got for the options length value. So that way the user can't actually enter in more content. Uh, also for the my input style width, we'll make it uh, not as wide. So you can customize, of course, the styling as needed and update adding in forms or Ajax requests once the content is ready to be submitted. And you can create your own version of the CAPTCHA on the input field.